for you, Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Heavenly Father, it's again and another privilege, oh God, for us to come into the throne room, Lord God. Father, just to say thank you, Lord God. We thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you with everything we have inside of us, Lord. Oh God, what a wonderful Savior you are. What a blessing you are today, Lord. Father, that we can celebrate your birth one more time, Lord God. And Father, as we come this morning, we ask your God to create in us a clean heart, renew in us a right spirit, Lord. Father, as we rejoice this morning, as we celebrate this morning, Lord God, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, oh God, for waking us up this morning. Father, looking around and see a beautiful day, Lord God, a day we had never seen before, Lord God. But Lord, through your mercy, Lord, you granted it to us, Lord. And we say thank you this morning. Father, you are our everlasting Father. You are our Savior this morning, Lord God. Oh God, that you gave your life, oh God, that we can stand in your presence today, Lord, and just say thank you, Lord. Father, we love on you this morning, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up, oh God. Oh, we bless your name, Lord God. Father, we just say have mercy this morning, Lord. And as we come this morning, Lord God, we want to cast all our cares upon you, Lord. For you love us, Lord God. All in the name of Jesus. Father, what a blessing it is this morning. Oh God, look upon each heart this morning, Lord. Father, raise us up, oh God. Father, that as we end the year with the last Sunday, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We just bless your name, Lord God. We lift up every member right now, Lord. We just lift up our pastor and his wife, Lord God. Father, we thank you, oh God. You brought us, Lord God. Sometimes it wasn't good, Lord God, but you kept us, Lord God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. As we look back, oh God, we just say thank you, Lord. And Father, as we press forward today, Lord, Father, we give you praise right now, and we give you glory. Father, we ask that this service, oh God, would just be a day of celebration, Lord. A day of, oh God, just giving you praise, Lord, for all your goodness and your mercy, Lord God. For your everlasting presence, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask that right now, if anybody's heavy later this morning, Father, burn them down, Lord God. We ask that you lift them up, Lord. If it's sickness in the building, Lord God, we know that you are the healer, Lord God. Whatever the need is, Lord, we give it to you right now. And we say thank you, God, and give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord.
Jesus. Oh, 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 and we've come today to celebrate him. We've come to celebrate none other than Jesus. We've come to celebrate to celebrate him. There is no one like our God. He has blessed us again and again. Hallelujah. Given us another Christmas morning. His name is Jesus. He's entrusted life with us again. Blessed us one more time on this side of the grave 
So we come tonight, today, to celebrate Jesus. I call your attention to the book of John, chapter 1. In the New Testament, the book is John. The chapter is 1, verse number 14. John chapter 1 and verse 14. When you found it, you will discover these words. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. I want to talk about this is Christmas. All right. All right. This is Christmas. I know I understand that in the past you've heard Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in their renditions of the Christmas morning stories. But I want to tell you this morning, this is, this is Christmas. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, I would sing it for you. All right. Come on. But I'll just quote the lyrics of Luther Vandross. Don't act like you don't know it. <laughs> Luther Vandross has gotten credit for a lot of dance. Luther Van Groff has gotten credit for a lot of intimacy because Luther Van Groff could sing. And he uses these words in his lyrics. The song is, this is Christmas. He says, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. There's hope for the world because this is Christmas Day. Say a little prayer for the world. God teach us to love. Though you think he doesn't hear, I know he does. This is Christmas. Let the world sing. Let us all again to heal, begin to heal. Then Luther gets excited. He says, hallelujah. This is Christmas. And with love, we will begin today. He goes on to talk about bells are ringing. People are singing. Then he comes back and he says, this is Christmas. Let us begin to heal today. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. This is Christmas. Hope is for the world today. Simply because it is Christmas Day. Now I hope y'all don't send me to hell because I quoted an R&B singer. But Luther has a point here. Luther says... Because it's Christmas, because Christ has shown up on Christmas morning, we ought to celebrate him. We ought to magnify him. We ought to lift him. If Luther can get excited, certainly we ought to get excited about Christmas Day. We have come to a point in our lives where everybody's birthday is celebrated, All right. but Jesus. All right. All Matter of fact, we've come to a point in our lives where we celebrate everybody else on Christmas, but Jesus. I remember, I remember the days during the month of December in Club Ebony All right. All right. in Indianola, Mississippi. <laughs> during the whole month of December, 
the DJ would close out the night with a slow song by the temptation. And they would sing silent, silent night. Somebody was at the, at, at the club here in Houston. The DJ, the DJ knew how to end the night. The DJ would say, now he has played boogity woogie boogie all night long. He had played March Day in the time all night long. He had played Gap Band and burned rubber on me all night long. People were, were stepping together in this group dance that y'all still do today. But the DJ knew how to end the night. And when the DJ end the night with silent nights, even folk who have rejected dances all night long flop to the floor. Same girl that turned down drinks, the same girl that turned down dance, the same girl that turned men away was looking for somebody, Brother Carter, <laughs> to end the night with silent night. You see, some kind of way we have gotten an inkling that Jesus is real. Some writer declares that he is real. He is real. He is real in my soul. He is, he is real. When we look at the history of, of Christmas, it's really Christ's mask. You see, the Catholics got it right. They got it right. They, they, when they go to church, they're going to mass. When they, when they go to church, they're going to mass. Mass means to celebrate. So we have Christ's mask. And because we have a Christ mass, we ought not wait to December the 25th to celebrate Christ. So it is Christ mass. This Christ mass is a religious celebration of Jesus Christ. You see, we celebrate it in different ways. And it's all right to celebrate any way you have chosen to celebrate. But don't forget the reason for this season. It is Christ mass. It is Christ celebration. We ought to celebrate Jesus the Christ. We ought to celebrate him in such a way that we join in with Luther Bandrop and get excited and say hallelujah. It is a religious celebration of who Jesus really is. It is a celebration of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, it is a holy celebration. It is a, a holy mass. When we get together on Sunday, we get together on Wednesday, get together on Tuesday, whatever our days are, we ought to celebrate Christ because he has done for us what we could not do for ourselves. We ought to celebrate. We ought to come together in this mass. We ought to come together in this celebration. We ought to come together in church to celebrate the Christ who has done more for us than we can do. You see, this text, in John chapter 1, we find John laying Jesus out. You see, John talks about Jesus the Christ who came to give his life. It is Jesus the Christ who came to donate his life. It is Jesus the Christ who came to lay down his life. But John stops in chapter one and he gets our attention focused on who Jesus is. You see, Jesus exists before that night when he couldn't find an end. Jesus exists before that night, before Mary and Joseph had no room. Jesus exists before that night. He exists before the night when the innkeeper says, you can't come in here. I have come to the conclusion today that people all over the world is telling Jesus, you can't come in here. People all over the world are telling Jesus, they're telling Jesus you are not welcome here. People all over the world are telling Jesus, Jesus, there's no room for you here. Just like on that night, the innkeeper says, there's no room 
at the end. We know the story. We know the story. The story reminds us every year of who Jesus is, and we're reminded every year of who Jesus is and what he went through. Yes, we're reminded that, that Mary, and, and Brother Whitlock laid it out in Sunday school this morning, Mary got happy. Yes, yes. Mary sung a song. Yes. Mary got ecstatic that God would choose a little girl like her. Yes. Let me just tell our youth and young people, God is choosing you today. That's right. And he is going to use you today. Right. You see, Mary, Mary... Mary was selected by God because of her humble spirit. Can you see the mother of Jesus being arrogant? God strategically selected Mary because of who she was and how she carried herself. It is a reminder to young girls and women all over the world to watch how you carry yourself. That's right, that's right. Make sure you don't flaunt your junk. Make sure you leave something for the honeymoon night. All right, All right. Up, Make sure that something about you is a secret. Yes. Yes. Mary carried herself. The Bible says that Mary hadn't been with a man. God selected her and she shows up pregnant. Now Joseph went to sleep with this matter in his heart. He said, now God, I know I ain't been there. <laughs> But she says she's expected. It's because no man had been there and she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. This is the text. The text. John says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. And then the same beginning, before beginning begun, Jesus was with God. This word, word, in the text, it's logos, and some may pronounce it logos. It is in the text, and it means to us that God is present. Jesus is the physical manifestation of an invisible God. He is the physical manifestation of the spiritual God. He is the visible image of an invisible God. So here we have holy mass. Here we have a celebration of who God is. And certainly we ought to celebrate him. So God robes himself up in human flesh. Here we have the hypostatic union, meaning that, that God is just as much God as God. Jesus is just as much God as God. And Jesus is just as much man as man. Yeah. It is in Jesus we have the hypostatic union. See, Jesus understands God, and Jesus understands man. When he got to Bethlehem of Judea, he was a representation of the physical body of man, and it takes a physical man to understand the ailments of man. Jesus understands you. Jesus hadn't forgotten you. Jesus still loves you. Somebody in the room may have come to the conclusion that God has come to a point where he's forgotten me. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that God has not forgotten you. I came to let you know that God is still in charge and God is still on the scene and God is still watching over you. He is the incarnation. He is not reincarnation. Because Christians don't believe in reincarnation, but Jesus is the only incarnation of God. He appeared as a baby in Bethlehem of Judea. But the text declares that he was in the beginning. He was in the beginning, and Jesus Christ was so in the beginning, everything that was made was made by him. Man takes credit for all these inventions. Let me tell you, Jesus already knows about it. Man takes credit for discovering things. Jesus already knows about it. Man takes credit for naming the animals. Don't you know that God didn't leave an animal out when he told Adam to name them? So we get credit. We make a lot of money because we get credit for doing something that no man else can has done. But Jesus has done it all. That's right. 
every person, everything, everybody, every place, God is well aware of it. Yes, yes. He is the omniscient God. He knows everything. He is the omnipresent God. He is everywhere. He is an omnipotent, uh, omnipotent God. He is all powerful and almighty. He is God. So he says that there was nothing made that was made except that which was made by Jesus Christ. Then he talked about the fact that men rejected him. Just like today, people are rejecting Jesus. People are rejecting who Jesus is. People are rejecting how Jesus got here. The book of Jude says, don't even accept them in your conversation, in your house, if they don't believe Jesus has already come. Jesus showed up in a body. Jesus was born of a woman. Joseph was his earthly father. God was his spiritual father. The Holy Spirit had impregnated this woman, and now she got to have a baby. Herod wanted to abort him. I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, there are kings that's trying to block your progress. Legislators are trying to block your progress. There are people all around us that are trying to block your progress. But let me tell you, God has already laid it out. So when the wise men came from before, by now, Jesus is a child, a toddler. They come not to the stable. They didn't come to watch him in the manger. They came while Jesus was in the house. And by now he's a toddler and they came and they brought gifts to him. Magi, magi, wise men came and brought gifts to him. We ought to take a note from the magi. Every now and then we ought to bring gifts to Jesus. It's Jesus' birthday. We should not show up at Jesus' party. We ought not show up at Jesus' celebration without a gift for him. The Apostle Paul said, lay it aside for the first day of the week. Whenever you show up at church, you ought to bring it unto the Lord. We come today to celebrate Jesus Christ, the incarnate Lord, the incarnate God. I mean, God has shown up in the flesh. And so here we have Mary, M-A-R-Y, Christ man. M-A-R-Y, Mary, the mother, was just a conduit, just a a symbol, just an instrument to get Jesus here. But we have Mary's, M-A-R-Y, Mary's, Christ's mass, Mary's, Jesus Christ, only because that was his mama. And it, now it is Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, M-E-R-R-Y, Merry Christmas, because we have Christ mass. And we ought to have more Christ. We ought to have Jesus. We ought to recognize him today. So the text declares that the word became flesh. The incarnate God, the God of flesh showed up on planet Earth. God himself shows up. Let me tell you, God has come to visit us. God has come to be with us. God is present everywhere we go. He is present even today in the Holy Spirit. He says, the word became flesh. The word was made flesh. See, Jesus Jesus left heaven. I mean, he left when, when I say heaven, he left paradise. He left a place of no suffering to come to a place of suffering for you and me. This Jesus, this Jesus left his throne in heaven to come to planet Earth and be ridiculed. This Jesus was born and laid and wrapped in grave clothes while in cloth. This Jesus was born and they laid him in a hog trough. 
This Jesus was born and they kept him in a horse and cow stable. He left glory and showed up on earth. Let me tell you, your loved ones that are gone now, that are sitting in heaven, that, that the songwriter said they're walking around heaven, those who are, who are in, the, in the presence of God, they would not dare come back here. I know that's right. But Jesus showed up here in our behalf. Because we were messed up, because we were sinners, because we had fallen short, Jesus shows up on our behalf. Thank you. It says, and the word became flesh, and he dwelled among us. He lived among us. This word dwell comes from the same Greek word that we get the word tent. We get the word tabernacle. So Jesus tabernacled around here. But he represents the presence of God himself. So you can easily say that God dwelled with us. He, he was present in the body of Jesus Christ. He was manifested in our presence. He wanted us to know I'm here for you. Therefore, if you're going through something right now, Jesus is saying, God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, I am here for you. He's here. Yes, Lord. Thank you. He's Thank present. You. Thank you. He's know. real. I know he is. And he's, he's not making a list and checking it twice. <laughs> he's not trying to figure out if you're naughty or nice. He knows everything. He had, because of God's mercy and God's grace, he, he just keep giving us another chance. He just keeps letting us come back over and over again. And he was revealed in glory. This is his divine presence. He, he, God is saying to us that, that he's here, he's present, he's available to us. And regardless if you didn't get what you wanted to get. If you didn't receive what you wanted to receive. If people didn't treat you the way you wanted to be treated. God is here. Thank you, Jesus. God is present. Thank you, Lord. I remember one time I got in trouble. You know, I told you I, my my family <laughs> suffered through some things with me. I got in trouble. I got in trouble 150 miles away from home. I'm in trouble. Guess what? I called for daddy. And daddy brought back up. I got in trouble. I mean, I was I was in big trouble. I was in life or death trouble. And I called for daddy. And guess what? It was, it was foggy outside. My brothers and my daddy wrote 150 miles all the way down to Alcorn State University. They wrote all the way down there in foggy weather. In the moment I saw that Buick LeSabre 450 horses under the engine. I, when I saw that blue and white LeSabre turn the corner, I said, everything going to be all right. Because daddy was there. Dad, when daddy showed up, things began to change. When daddy showed up, I could tell him my issue and he would understand. And just for the record, I didn't do anything wrong. I was just in trouble. Have you ever been in trouble and didn't do anything wrong? Yes. yes, yes. Have you ever been in trouble and people will, will deceive and lie on you? Yes. Have you ever been in trouble and you didn't deserve to be in trouble? Yes. Have you ever been in trouble and it's because of one wrong phone call you got in trouble? One tweet. One email. One TikTok. And now I'm in trouble. One Instagram. And I'm in trouble. But the good news is God shows up on our behalf. Have you ever been in trouble and you couldn't call your biological daddy? Have you ever been in trouble where you, your daddy couldn't make it to you? Have you ever been in trouble and you can holler? You know, grown folk like to holler, Mama! <laughs> They get in trouble and they start hollering, mama, mama. 
But when mama can't be there, when daddy can't be there, God wants you to know I am here for you. I am able to keep you. I'm able to bless you. And the good thing about God, now daddy showed up and he got me out of that trouble. And guess what? A few months later, I'm in trouble again. No. I know. That's why, that's why I, don't, I don't get excited when children get in trouble. Because I've been in trouble. I've been in trouble. A whole, my, it takes my brothers and sisters to tell you how much trouble I was in. And some of the time, most of the time, really, it wasn't my fault, but I was in trouble. That's why when I go to the prison, and, I, and, and Deacon Alfred can tell you, when I go to the prison, I begin my conversation with the men in the room or the women in the room, and I say to them, I know that everybody here are innocent. I know somebody lied on you. I understand that the woman, when she was sitting in the window and she saw you, it really wasn't you. I understand that everybody in the room is innocent. But just in case somebody will admit it today, God is faithful and God is just to stop you from your sin. And God is faithful and God is just to forgive you from your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So John says in verse number 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. This word begotten, this word begotten as it is in John 3.16, this word begotten means unique son. Your God's one of a kind son. This word begotten means that, that there is none like God's son. And you notice that Father is in all caps. It's because we need to understand that it's God the Father. It is the Son of God, Jesus himself, that showed up in incarnate flesh. And he showed up in his glory. His divine presence was here. As God manifested himself in, in glory, in, in his glory, God showed up as a tent. He showed up as a tabernacle, meaning that Jesus walked around here and we have tabernacles now. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that one of these days, when this earthly tabernacle, this earthly tent will be dissolved down here, we had another building in heaven not made by hand. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. See, you, you're seeing doctors, you're seeing lawyers, you, you're seeing preachers, you're seeing teachers, and you're trying to make sure you keep your tabernacle in check. But let me tell you, when you got a tabernacle, you just got a tent. And when you got a tent, the wind blows, your tent blows. The rain falls, your tent gets water in it. You don't think so? What do you call a high blood pressure? Is water in the tent. That's right. Arthur in Friday is water in the tent. No more afro but a bald head is water in the tent. Can't run as fast as he used to run. Is water in the tent. So it's because we have tents that we got to leave here. And since we have tents, we need the presence of God. You see, when Jesus showed up at the tabernacle, he ushered in the presence of God. You remember, you remember the Ark of the Covenant? It's because everywhere the Ark went, there God was. He was present with us. When Jesus shows up, he shows up in the presence, the glory of God. He's unique. He's different. All we have to do is trust him. This is the day that we can highlight that we really trust God. The last Sunday of the year, it's time for New Year's revolutions and New Year's resolutions. I said it's time for a New Year resolution and a New Year's revolution. It is time for us to make promises to ourselves as well as to other people. Matter of fact, you can keep it to yourself. It is time for a new revolution. It's time for a change. It's time to make things different. It's time to behave different. And especially during this season, it's time for us to give to others. 
It's time for us to help those who can't help themselves. It's time for us to be a part of a day-to-day -day celebration of Jesus Christ himself. Not only does Christmas mean Christ Mass, not only does Christ Mass mean a celebration of Jesus Christ, another thing that Christ Mass means, it means the death of Jesus Christ. The same Jesus that arrived, the same Jesus was born of a virgin called Mary. That same Jesus, when you say Christmas, when you say Christmas, when you say Christ Mass, you're really saying the death of Christ. It is this moment. It is this moment when we ought to realize that he didn't just come to be born, to walk these mundane chores, healing and giving strength and giving hope. We have to get like Luther Vandroff and say, hallelujah, this is Christmas. You see, Christmas is not Christmas. Christmas is not Christmas. Christ is not Christ's mass until we understand that Jesus uh, was born, but he had to die. Right. Oh, he died, I tell you. The same Jesus that was born and they celebrated and the angels looked off the balcony and said, glory, hallelujah, he is born, hallelujah. And we ought to celebrate and say, glory, hallelujah, he is born. But even though he was born, our sins were all around us. Our sin was taking us to hell. But because Jesus came and rescued us, he was born, but then he died. I tell you, he died. I tell you, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. The same Jesus that was born on Christmas morning, the, the same Jesus that we celebrate, he died on Calvary. Mean men hung him high. Mean men dropped him low. Mean men stretched him wide. He died on Calvary. Mean men killed him, I tell you. After they killed him, they pierced him in his side. And up came blood and water. It's that blood that saves us and keeps us. Thank you. Thank you. They took him off the cross. Laid the same Christ in a barber tomb. The word Christ means the anointed one, and, and you can't deal with the anointed one. You can't frustrate the anointed one. I mean the grave thought he had him. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. It was Joseph's brand new tomb. It was a tomb that had never been laid in before. They, they killed him and laid him in a brand new tomb. The grave thought he had him. He could hold him. The death thought he could keep him. But early that third day morning, when the grave and, the, and, and, and death had a conversation, early that third day morning, after they had declared, I got him, the grave began to testify, I got all of them down here. The grave said, I got Adam down here. I got Abraham, I again Jacob down here. Death said, I am holding on to Noah down here. I am holding on to all the great prophets down here. I even got Lazarus for the second time down here. But early that third day morning, while grave and death thought they had him, early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Saint Jesus that was born on Christmas morning died on Friday, was buried and stayed there until early that third day morning. He got up early that third day Sunday morning. He rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He said to grave, he said to death, I'm here. This is Christmas morning. I'm here. Let me just share with you young people. Jesus Christ is here. Same Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me when we sin and we confess our sin. He forgives us for our sins. And if you don't know him, this is a good opportunity to get to know him. On Christmas morning. You can't afford to wait. You never know when your moment is. You got to trust him right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Yeah.
Will you come to Jesus? Just as you are here, you say, well, preacher, I want to get it right first. You'll never get it right. You need Jesus to get it right. The door is open. You can't wait till your New Year's resolution start taking on shape and form. You need to trust him today. The door is open. Will you come? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't wait. Don't wait. Just come just now. Don't don't wait. Come now. Come to Jesus. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, will you bow your head with me and invite him into your life right now, right where you are? If you're driving, pull over to the side. If you're watching something else, stop for a moment. This is more important. Just bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We thank God for you. We thank God that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Please inbox us and let us know that you've come to Jesus Christ and we want to celebrate with you and jump for joy and say hallelujah. It is Christmas. It is Christmas. It is Christmas Day. This is Christmas. For those of you who don't have a church home or you in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is present. 365 to 366 days a week, Jesus is present. Let us know if you want to join. Be a member, whether you're global or local. Uh, please uh, join the New Beginning Church. It is often time. It's time for us to give to give to Jesus. Please note, note on your special area a gift for Jesus for his birthday. It's time for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. Please write a note right there on your on your envelope. Uh, and when you write it on your envelope, just say this is a Jesus birthday gift. And you ought to give other than above your tithes and offering. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for blessing us with money, with income, with increase. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you. We pray that you bless every giver. Bless us, Father God, to make the sacrifice to give to Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Let's read our scripture together. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's read our scripture together. It says, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you receive or get back. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Amen. For those of you who want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account and if you want to mail in your gift you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Yes Lord Yes, Lord. It's Jesus' birthday. I'm so glad it's your love. All the arrows that you have. Glad you decided to stand.
Father, first your presence on the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's God's offering sacrifice again. As this side to stand, Father, first your presence on the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's God's offering and sacrifice again. every gift and every giver. We pray to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So glad it is Christmas. I feel like singing. Oh, man. Glad y'all encouraging me. Hallelujah. Oh, Happy birthday, Jesus. Father God, we ask you to bless those names who've been called. Lord, bless and heal, touch and deliver. Bless, Father God, as only you can. Strengthen God, for we know you can. Lord, we ask you, Father God, for miracles for every single person in this room and name was called. We pray, Father God, that you show yourself mighty, that our friends, our foes, our neighbors, our associates will see your mighty hand at work. Bless, Father God, these who have entered their names on the prayer list. We ask you to comfort them, mold and shape their lives in such a way that they will give you the glory and cry hallelujah to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Can you go back to the announcements for me, please? Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir. Today we do need to take photos. We need to take photos this week and next week. We need to take photos because the one I took uh, last week did not come out well. It's not representative of our, of our character. It's not representative of of what we put out, amen? So we need to take one today and one next week so we combine those people because we know people are traveling today, you know. So we wanna take photos again today. The slogan, $25 goes to the person who, who um, win the slogan for 2023. Please, ma'am, please, sir, have your slogan in by December the 20, December 31st, sorry, by December 31st, have your slogan in. Don't get it off the internet because everybody can see you got it off the internet. Amen. 
uh, just just be creative and pray to the Lord that it will be something that is meaningful that our church can abide by for one year. Amen. It's open to visitors as well as um, as as members. Amen. Uh, Christmas service worship uh, was today. Thank you so much for your attendance and because you have attended today, uh, a friend of mine have chosen to give gifts to all of you who are present today. We have enough for everybody. And so uh, at the end of, of this service, we'll ask uh, the young people to meet Sister Davis over on this side and then the adults to meet me here at the altar. I'm, I'm meeting with the adults at the altar. I'm meeting with the adults at the altar. You'll get that by the time you get to the house, amen. I want to meet with the adults at the Austin so I can give you your gifts. Amen. You okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to take pictures of everybody in front of the Christmas tree, and we're going to post these pictures on our um, New Games Facebook page. So, family portraits in front of the, the Christmas tree. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, participate. Uh, we'll be glad to have you a part of our, our demonstrations of life. Amen. While we stand to be dismissed, if there's nothing else. Our mission and vision, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Well, that's our businesses to wave, wave, wave their hand if you're visiting with us today. Anybody visiting with us? One. We got businesses. Tell us who you are and where you're from and who invited you if you're visiting with us today. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> who is your mom? Okay, Ashton that Law, visiting with Sister Sandra Landlock. Thank you so much for visiting with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another visitor over in that area. We tell us who who that visitor is and who invited that visitor. I can't hear you. Hello, Aunt Denise. How you doing, Aunt Denise? Glad to have you here today. Thank you for visiting with us today. Please join us at the altar to get your gift for visiting with us today. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We honor you. We bless your name. We thank you for Christmas Day. We thank you for Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We ask you to bless us, Father God, and continue to walk with us. And bless us, Father God, to be about your business. Bless us to celebrate Christ today. And bless us to walk with you the rest of this year. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless our church to continue to be a beacon light for others to see. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together, Amen. Amen. We are we are going through the Bible. We are listening through the Bible this year. Pick up your sheet where you can check it off as you listen. Amen. Pick up your sheet right here at the altar. Amen. Thank you so much.